Even in the offseason, there is no such thing as downtime in the National Basketball Association. We will talk about the latest with Donovan Mitchell on this episode of the show. Stay tuned. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everyone? Welcome into this special edition of the Locked On Louisville podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. For those who don't know who I am, I serve as a credential media member for Cardinal Sports Zone. I do some PA announcing work for the university in various sports. want to take this time quickly to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder, the Locked On Louisville podcast free on all streaming services five days a week, your team every day. It's always a special time in the studio when I have my guy, NBA writer for Forbes.com, Shane Young, in the virtual restream studio. Shane, what's going on, man? Not a lot, Dalton. Not a lot. I hope you're all right after that health scare you had a little bit this <laughs> week, but uh, hopefully you're yeah. good. And for me, just trying not to get too hot because it's been blazing out here, man. It's been blazing. I've been inside for the past 48 hours, so I truly wouldn't be able to tell you too much about how hot it is. But regardless, um. Never a cool time in the NBA in terms of inactivity. Even in the offseason, there is a lot to talk about. Um, we'll talk about the, the latest with Donovan Mitchell, um, basically discussing the timeline of a possible trade out of the Salt Lake City, how much you would be willing to give up for Donovan, and then talking about two possible destinations and their plausibility in the New York Knicks and the Miami Heat. We'll start out with the timeline, Shane. To kind of catch our readers up a little bit, you came on the show a couple months ago talking about what Utah needed to do um, (laughs) and uh, what they couldn't do, I guess I should say. And what the worst case scenario was, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that the worst case scenario was losing in the first round to the Dallas Mavericks. (laughs) They did. Um, And I remember the topic of that show being, well, what happens? Who goes first? Well, obviously, Rudy Gobert goes first in a trade package that still questions me to this day, but nonetheless is changing the way trades are going down as we know it. Donovan Mitchell, the lone superstar with the Utah Jazz, that hasn't necessarily taken away his name out of trade rumors. There's been a lot of rumors, but Utah Jazz, it may be positioning, but they've said, hey, look, we're comfortable keeping Donovan Mitchell through the season. I mean, he's an unrestricted free agent through 2026. So, Shane, I I guess the question is, maybe I'm looking too much into this. Maybe I'm looking too much into the smoke. Is there a chance that we see him traded before opening night come the fall? Yeah, it's a good point you made about, like, what we – what we thought the Jazz's uh, situation was going to be two months ago and what it is now. Like, I think if you would have polled both of us before that first-round series against Dallas started, we would have said – they're probably Rudy and Donovan are probably both back this year, just because you have to kind of run its course. Uh, at worst, we thought one would be gone. <laughs> I didn't think it would be a scenario where they're blowing it up, Dalton. Like they are, right. they are going to hit reset and get as many draft assets as possible. They're going to full. Uh, they're going to go on full Houston Rockets mode, try to get all the draft capital they can and build around young stars. But I think Donovan is for sure gone. I I would even say. 95 percent 95 percent that he's gone before before training camp opens and whatever city he'll be in which will be september 25th is when media day is so i think he's 95 percent out of utah i see the i see both ends of the spectrum you know there's the camp that says well he just signed a max deal he's an unrestricted free agent through what is it uh 2026 when he's making 37 right he has a I think it's a player, player option, option. Yeah. Uh, for that season, which yeah, obviously I don't think it's going to get to that point in, in terms yeah. of his tenure in Utah. But regardless, um, needless to say, whether it's positioning um, on a um, like a literal scale, kind of like with what New York or what Brooklyn is doing with Kevin Durant at the moment. Um, needless to say, I think Rudy Gobert kind of uh, threw a wrench in all the plans because of the package that they got for a guy who can't score outside of the paint. Um, but regardless, yeah. that's a conversation for a different day. But Shane, I would argue that really the NBA player has never had more of a say or the, a superstar has never really had more of a say. And it kind of started with LeBron and, and how, you know, people want to say, oh, the super teams didn't form with the big three. That might be right. But I would argue that the players never had more power 
until 2010, yeah. LeBron makes the decision to South Beach. Then you talk about my Houston Rockets, James Harden forcing his way out of Houston. And now you have a player like Donovan Mitchell. We're seeing guys, you know, want to essentially leave their their destinations at yeah. an all-time rate, and they had the power to do so. I mean, it, it's hard to believe that Donovan mm-hmm. couldn't force Utah's hand here despite him being under contract. Contracts now are, to your point, they're being breached because, like, they, they essentially mean nothing. Imagine right. signing for to be under contract for four more years, which Donovan is, and or three more years, I guess you could say, and then essentially saying, like, hey, I'm not going to play here despite me signing on the dotted line and everything being all happy. And, you know, I love Salt Lake City, as he said many times, and now it just it means nothing. Um, it, which, you know, not that's not Donovan's case. Like, it, we're more so talking about Kevin Durant right now, like, in terms of player empowerment. That dude is just dictating the market. Like, he he has four years. KD has four years with Brooklyn, no player option. So he is just locked in for four years, cannot opt out, and yet he's saying, "Trade me." Like that's that takes some real guts. It it, it really does to be able to dictate the market like that. Um, and you're right; it started with LeBron in 2010. I would even say, like you know, 2014 is when you really felt it. 2010 wasn't that it wasn't that bad because we were all kind of new to it. But 2014, whenever he left Miami to go to Cleveland and held up the the market for 14 days, making his decision, that's kind of when you felt like, okay, like things are about to change. And ever since then, we've seen players leave to go to other destinations, uh, demand out of their contracts, or just say, hey, in Ben Simmons' case, I'm not going to play for you anymore. Trade me. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. I don't think – yeah, Donovan, I I think he – in Donovan's case, Dalton, I'm not sure if you agree with this, but – I think he'd be okay coming back there. And I think he doesn't really want to leave. Like, it's not like a thing where like, I'm out of here now. It's like the, the franchise is more so saying we're just going to hit reset because what's the point of building around Donovan Mitchell when we've seen where that gets us, it gets us into the first round, maybe second round, not much further. They kind of want to hit reset all around. So I think it's a mute. It's going to be a mutual I think It's going to be a mutual uh, parting of ways between Donovan and Utah. And it really depends on what Danny Ainge, what his, um, I guess, what his his forte is here. What is the objective? Is he trying to, is he saying, okay, we saw that Rudy Gobert is not the guy. We maximized the trade yield for him. You know, we stocked for the future, but we also maybe got picks to where we maybe can turn those and, and flip them to where maybe this year is kind of a wash. We try to do what we can to, to, to skirt by, maybe get a lottery pick, but next year when there are some free agents, when you might be able to clear up some money, maybe we can, You'll get a guy to come play with Donovan, but then you you'll face the small market mentality of who in the hell is going to want to play exactly. voluntarily in Salt Lake City. So it, you know it's kind of there. There's so many like devil's advocates to like each situation here, to where it's like you kind of have to build through the draft, and when you have Donovan Mitchell, you're not fully going to tank, and you uh, gave up Rudy Gobert. So it's what are we doing here? What is the identity of this team? I mean, look at the Utah Jazz's team payroll right now. I mean, it's Donovan oh, Mitchell, man. Conley. Bogdanovich, Malik Beasley, and Jordan Clarkson are the guys making the most money on the team. Outside of that, there really is not a lot of young talent. I mean, sure, there's Walker Kessler, who might be a, a second uh, unit center. Yeah. Um, there's just well, like, what you mentioned. What, what I think I think you brought up a really good thing right there, where you said how they cannot really just package these picks that they got for Rudy and potentially they're going to get for Donovan and and trade for a player. You know why? Because that's why Oklahoma City hasn't done it yet. Oklahoma City has every draft pick known to man, right, from that Paul George trade and, and subsequent trades they've made. But guess what? They're not going to package that for a player because they know no one wants to play there. They know no big-name fish like a James Harden or whoever, Kyrie Irving, is going to re-sign there. So you have to build through the draft. And when you said that, I was like, yeah, Utah, it's kind of like the City. Kevin Durant thing, and what people mm-hmm. are kind of well, thinking about is, oh, he has no say of where he's traded. Oh, but he has a say of where he shows up and plays. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if he's not wanting to play in Brooklyn with Kyrie Irving and Ben Simmons, why in the hell would he, number one, want to go back to Oklahoma City? Yeah. And number two, I mean, that team is going to be him and a, you, me, and a couple other guys playing. 
with the way yeah. Chet Homer, Chet Holmgren, and Shane Young and Dalton Pence on the court for the for the Oklahoma City Thunder. But regardless, as as it pertains to Donovan, there's just so many factors here, and it just looks like Utah and Donovan are kind of in that collision course, or at least on the pathway for it, because there's no such thing as a half-ass rebuild. Oh no, you, you can't. You know who's doing that right in, now? In a place like. In a small market, you either have yeah. to tear it all the way down or you have to hopefully have a friend of Donovan's that's willing to play in Salt Lake mm-hmm. City. I don't know who would. But regardless, which, let's switch tunes a little bit. I want to talk about what a possible package could look like for Donovan Mitchell. And if it is anything like what they're reportedly asking for from the New York Knicks, Mitchell might be a jazz for life. <laughs> um, we will mention that here in just a second after we talk about our friends over at Built Bar, from the people who invented healthy and tasty comes the latest gift to your taste buds. You probably tried the amazing coconut brownie chunk Built Bar, but guess what? Your friends at Built have given coconut brownie chunk the puffs treatment. That is the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They've continually added new flavors, um, and they're covered in 100% real chocolate, as are all of the Built Bar products. You can go to built.com and scroll down to check out the macros chart and see all the healthy benefits that they have. They taste like a candy bar, but having all of the healthy benefits of a protein bar. There are so many delicious flavors to choose from. Go to built.com right now. Use the promo code LOCKED15. You'll get 15% off your order. Once again, LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built. Dot com. Moving right along in this special episode with my friend, NBA writer for Forbes.com, Shane Young. Shane, I'm sure you saw the hypothetical trade package, yeah. uh, or at least what Utah was asking for. And obviously, some of it may be posturing because you, you ask for the moon and you settle for the stars. Um, but if I'm remembering this right, they want essentially almost, not even almost, they want more than what Houston got for James Harden yeah. from the Brooklyn Nets. They do. And the reason for that is because they just think that the asking price is going up and up and up for guys that are younger. Harden was what during that trade? 31, 30 years old, 31. Donovan's what? 25, 26. Like I I think um, the fact that you can potentially sell Donovan on the future there and have 10 to 15 years of Donovan Mitchell is more meaningful in in their estimation. That that's what I think that's what they're thinking. Then, then getting James Harden, you know, for what, four or five years that that he's aging very poorly as we've seen. Um, Honestly, Dalton, I, I think, uh, you know, I know you said we'll get into hypothetical or, you know, what, what Donovan could yield in a trade. I think this is going to look a lot like the Paul George trade. And I've already mentioned that uh, on the show so far, but for those who don't remember in 2019, uh, July, 2019, the Clippers sent Oklahoma city, three unprotected picks plus two swaps. And then they also got Shea Gilders Alexander, which was their star at that time. And Danilo Gallinari, which was kind of a throw in. So in essence, I think to answer your question, I think it's going to be four or five picks and then one like rock solid player, or you can go the route of like a few picks plus a couple of players around the same skill set, but not a star. Um, so it just depends. You were right when you asked about what's Danny Ainge's end game. Is it end game to get another star? Well, then you take the kind of like the Paul George package and, and get someone like Shea Gilders Alexander to build around in that comparison. Um, or you can just go all about draft picks. Hey, we want seven or eight picks. <laughs> I, I I would be hesitant it to works. give up seven or eight picks. I, I would be hesitant yeah. to give that up. Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't give that up. But well, the thing about it is, is we literally have documentation of why that's a bad idea. Yeah. Now, maybe it's a little bit different if you're packaging Donovan Mitchell or you're pairing Donovan Mitchell with some younger stars as opposed to like uh, the Boston's big three uh, when you get Kevin Durant or Kevin Durant, Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce. Or if you're Brooklyn and you're trading away for James Harden, who's pairing up with Durant and Kyrie Irving. Um, I- I'm curious as your take on this, does the, the, the current state of an organization, let's say if it's like a, cause I feel like Miami and New York would be willing to give up different things. Yeah. I feel like New York, mm-hmm. if you're looking for that, and it doesn't have to be New York or Miami. They kind of represent two different groups. The, the one that's looking for a star to build around or yep. one that's looking to just go all in and, and try to win an, uh, an, an NBA championship. I feel like the team's, that are wanting to just go out and get a star 
are honestly maybe more willing to give up more than, than say, a championship aspiration team. Because if you're Miami, what are you giving Jimmy Butler or Bam Adebayo for Donovan Mitchell up for? The only thing you're doing is messing up chemistry. That's yeah. why the trade market, as good as cool it is, as it is to say that you might trade for Donovan Mitchell, Utah's not just going to give him up for Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson, and three or four first-round no. picks. And, and they would be stupid, too, because the whole point of – going on this rebuild is Utah wants to be OKC. They want to have many, what do they call it? Cracks at the apple or many, uh, some like they want to have many opportunities to, to draft and look at OKC Chet Holmgren. Like they, they have put in Shea obviously is, is the guy that they didn't draft, but they kind of, they're building around him. Um, and Josh Giddy, like they have a, a lot of guys that they, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't say that they planned for. They didn't plan to get Chet. They didn't plan to get Josh Giddy. They did, Shea just fell on their lap. So I think you, if you're going to go a full rebuild, you have to go for the picks. And you're right. I think Miami would be willing to give up something entirely different. Let me ask you this. Uh, you know who runs Miami? Pat Riley, right? Like he's 77, 78 years old. Do you think he cares about draft picks six years from now? Like he wants to win now. Does. Yeah, he wants to win now. But also think that the, that ball is not in his court. I think you could offer Duncan and Tyler in like six first-round picks, and they may still turn it down because they might just be looking for an all-star caliber player. Yeah, um, and it may we don't know. You may have yeah. to give up a little more to get him. So I think that honestly, the ball might not necessarily be in their court. And the thing about it is, unless Donovan Mitchell literally says, "Okay, I'm not playing a single minute until you trade me," which I guess uh, if this goes along. A, a little longer who knows what happens because things can change like that in the nba yeah. we've seen that but if donovan's comfortable with playing it out why utah is you know searching through trade stuff it, it's going to be hard for miami to put together a package i do want to cut this segment short and kind of go into talking about um what his fit would look like with the knicks and the heat because the segment will probably last a little longer if you're watching this you're not going to hear the audio implemented advertisements on the other streaming services if you are listening to it, stand by, um, relax, check out some nice advertisements, and you will be back with us here in just a second. So the final segment of the show with Forbes.com NBA writer Shane Young. Shane, there's two destinations that a lot of people have been talking about with uh, you know Donovan Mitchell for a long time. I guess you could say three if you want to throw in the Brooklyn Nets to go along with the New York Knicks and the Miami Heat, but mainly the latter have been kind of mentioned the most. Brooklyn only really getting mentioned because it's close to where he grew up in his hometown. I want to start out with the Heat because that's who we've been talking about. Um, it, it, it's hard to really say, well, how's the fit going to look like with Jimmy Butler and Bam at Ohio? Because I can't see Utah accepting a package if you don't get one of those guys back. But let's say, yeah. for instance, that they that they do go w with uh, a package from Miami. And I'm just going to spitball here. I'm looking at Miami's uh, cap situation right now just to kind of uh, throw it together a package. Let's say, you know, Lowry, uh, Rob, Lowry for salary purposes, uh, Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero. Um, mm -hmm. They throw in, like, Nikola Jovic. And, I mean, let's say, like, four picks and four swaps. Like, they mm -hmm. completely empty the cupboard. Um, how do you like the fit with Bam and Jimmy, if that were a possibility? I, I love that way more than the New York one. Just because, well, a couple of reasons. But one being, you have a head coach that's been there. You have a head coach that understands roles, understands expectations. Do you think, like, do you think New York and Tom Thibodeau, do you think they would have Donovan playing the right role immediately? I don't. I kind of feel like Miami would he just slide right in and he would be a way better and I mean way better version of Tyler Hero. Someone that was people don't know this, people don't understand this, but Tyler Hero was their leading scorer for a large chunk of the season. And I think if if you're in a world where Jimmy Butler is hurt with an ankle injury that he misses 15 games with, we've seen that plenty of times in his career. Guess who's there? Donovan Mitchell to kind of break down defenses off pick and roll. And I and I know you watched the Celtics Heat. Eastern Conference Final Series where they lost in a in a hard fought seven games. You know what they needed? They needed a score that can get something done off the dribble. They need somebody that they could trust whenever Jimmy's just tired after playing forty seven minutes every night. And I think I think Donovan is that guy. Now you run into the 
whole issue of the supporting cast. If it's Donovan, Jimmy, and Bam, and literally no shooters outside of maybe Gabe Vincent or Max Struess, like, you know, it, you kind of run into the, your half-court offense being a little muddy at times. But uh, I would not doubt them defensively. I would not doubt them in terms of clutch time offense. Uh, mm. For me, it would just be like the shooting would be on the light side in, in that particular package you just mentioned. Let's say let's kind of switch over because I think it's pretty str- straightforward. I think that if they go out and they get Donovan Mitchell and you have a guy like Bam and you have a guy like Jimmy Butler, I mean that's they're right up there in the East in terms of yeah. I think in, that in, I think they would be the second best team in the East if they did that behind maybe Milwaukee. Yeah, but, a healthy Milwaukee. It, it yeah. goes with noting. Yeah, uh, and, and there's no doubt doubt about that. I really would like to see how uh, Spo, who is one of the best X's and O's guy in my opinion in the league. And I know you're very high on Eric Spolster as well. Yeah. I, I'm interested to see, you know, him getting a crack at, at, at running a rotation with those guys, but I'll be honest with you. I've kind of gone back and forth from a marketing perspective. It's genius. I know yeah. that he is the type of superstar to flourish there in the big apple in the quote unquote Mecca <laughs> of NBA basketball. If this were the 1980s and 1990s, um, the New York Knicks, have been linked with every possible superstar since the NBA's um, you know introduction back in the early 20th century. Um, but Donovan Mitchell makes a lot of sense for them from a marketing perspective. But in terms oh, yeah. of giving up a lot of uh, a lot of draft capital, which they have, the Knicks have, mm-hmm. I think, um, their picks and a couple other picks in the next Dallas's three years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've got Dallas's picks. Um, they also have some young players they could part with, um, Obi Toppin, Emmanuel Quickly. They obviously would like to keep R.J. Barrett to try to build a little bit around um, you know, what they could. Uh, they have some other pieces up in the Big Apple. But in terms of possible packages, if you're looking to maybe retool, if you're the Utah Jazz, start the rebuild, get picks, but also some younger guys, the New York Knicks is probably the uh, most attractive um, uh, trade partner for the Utah jazz. What are your thoughts in a Donovan Mitchell filled New York Knicks organization? I'm kind of, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I feel like I'm kind of on the same plane as you are where I love it marketing wise for the superstar. For Donovan. They're not going to win. Yeah. I love but it. It's for cool the, to see yeah, him get the show yeah. out. I love it for the off the court ventures for him being with his family. Right. I mean, don't, aren't they, aren't they all New York people? I know they're, Connecticut. First of all, the, the Spider Man possible marketing already. <laughs> yeah. I've already seen um, memes in 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 all these like uh um, yeah. pictures on Twitter, and I'm like, yeah, they could run with this. But Dalton, if you commit eighty million in salary combined each year to a backcourt of Jalen Brunson and Donovan Mitchell, you're maxing out at 45 wins. Like I, that's mad. That's ceiling for me, man. So I think uh, the Brunson the deal makes it a little bit more challenging because I, I yeah, don't the, like, I, I, I don't like the fit there. Oh no. Uh, I, I kind of like it from a, from a defensive. Well, you know, Donovan struggled mightily defensively this year. So I'm not really going to say that, but Jalen Brunson is someone that can kind of light a fire under him. He was really good this year on both ends. Jalen Brunson was, and he really, he torched, Donovan's team in the playoffs. So I think there's that respect factor there. Yeah. And he would he would kind of get motivation from Donovan. But you know what? They just don't have I don't I don't like Julius Randle as a pro, as a as a player. That's just me. I, it sounds harsh to say. I just don't like him as a fit or on any team, uh, especially one that doesn't have shooting. And we were already talking about or I was talking about the the lack of shooting on Miami if you get rid of Tyler and Duncan. Uh who's shooting who's spacing the floor for these guys in New York? Nobody. Like nobody. Yeah. That's that's the question for me. It kind of reminds me of like the mid 2010s, um, not, yeah, early 2010s New York Knicks when they went out and they oh. got Carmelo Anthony. Yeah. And the roster around him really didn't make all that much sense. So Carmelo was great in New York for a good stretch of time. Donovan Mitchell probably would be great in New York for mm-hmm. a long time. But the ceiling is like the four seed. Or the five yep. seed at most, and this is an Eastern Conference that is better than when it than what it was back in 2011, 2012 as a whole. So, uh, I want to ask you something: Do you think Donovan would be content with being there and maxing out at the five seed, but having a chance to win a scoring title? You know, having a chance to to be a 29 to 30 point per game guy. Do you think he'd be okay with that? <sighs> 
I don't know. I mean, for me, I I'm all about winning, in my opinion. I mean, obviously, I want to I want to get mine, but I, I also <laughs> want to win. And you know, these guys are confident in themselves. That, and maybe Donovan goes to New York and he's thinking, okay, I have a better chance in New York than I ever would in in, in Utah. And, and, and he maybe yeah. he says, okay. I could be a free agent at 29 when I'm technically probably going to be in my prime. If it doesn't work out in New York, I've got that experience, but I can go elsewhere. I can sign a max deal elsewhere if I need to. So I think he's probably like, what the hell? Why not sign me up? I may go get a score in the end that might get me more money. That might help me to you know, maybe facilitate a sign and trade with New York at the end of the day. Who knows? There's a lot of possibilities, yeah. but I really love – um, you know, from from like a personal standpoint, I think it would mean yeah. a lot for Donovan to to get to well, go back to the Big Apple to play in his home state. What about the opportunity if it presented itself, which it seems like it's it's on the table. It seems like it's possible, very possible. What if they just figure out a way to do a four team trade, and KD goes to Phoenix or somewhere, Ben Simmons goes to Utah, God rest his soul, and 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 Donovan is in Brooklyn. What if Donovan is in Brooklyn? I like, think it's I think it's kind of the same thing. I think it, that uh, and it's a better and it's a better basketball team, a way better basketball team. Yeah, um, because you're obviously going to get more back from you know because you're giving out Katie and Ben. You're going to get more than just Donovan Mitchell back yeah. in that trade. Uh, you're probably I don't even know how that would work. I guess you'll it, get like there's Mikhail, the, the complications are it's just too yeah, you'll get uh, but... you'll assume you're gonna get like Mikel Bridges in that deal. So you might have a solid team. Uh Kyrie Irving, who knows? But I'll, I'll be <laughs> very interesting to see what a Donovan Kyrie. That's like one of those things I'm like, I don't know how that would work. I, I think from a basketball standpoint, I think personally, I don't want to put words in Donovan's mouth, but if you're from New York, it feels like you probably would be it'd be more of a sensation to play for the Knicks than the Nets, yeah. considering recency bias. Uh, but from a basketball standpoint, you're getting paid. You're still playing in one of the five boroughs, and, and you're playing for a team that, hey, stranger things can happen. Maybe they make a run at, at you know maybe a finals appearance. Depending, I mean, first of all, Kyrie and Donovan would have to work seamlessly. Uh, I'm just not sure of the fit. That's probably what I was like. Okay, two ball dominant guards. Uh, both are not the greatest and you have defenders. To well, you do have a young. I, I I like Brooklyn because you have a young center, Nick Claxton, who's only going to get better. And you also have Mikel Bridges. I'll, I'll, I really am yeah. a fan of Mikel Bridges as well. Yeah. So, and I'm not saying and, and not to mention what, whatever else they may get for Kevin Durant. Who the hell knows? Yeah. And, yeah. So it would be an unfinished product, uh, but it's but it's something I just like better than the next. And really, maybe it, maybe I'm biased because it comes down to me just not appealing to R.J. Barrett and and uh, Julius Randle as basketball players. Maybe, maybe that's just me. Maybe I just, I, I don't think they're winning players. I, I just don't think they are. And that's not necessarily a, a, a bad thing to say, but it, it is what it is. Shane, always appreciate you having me on before we get out of here. I know we're approaching the 30 minute mark. Do me a favor. Your, your Twitter pro, your Twitter handles in the graphic below. Where else can we find your work? Really? I mean, uh, been kind of silent here since the off seasons kicked in on full gear, but Forbes uh, sports money section, that's where all my stuff will be. Uh, you can find all my articles on Twitter, but if I write something, it'll be tweeted. So uh, right now, just kind of honestly, Dalton, uh, and for people listening, kind of just about to do an overview of the 2023 NBA favorites, the Clippers. Um, I think they're going to enter the favorites and I think uh, you might be on my side there. So I might do a big overview of their roster coming up in next week. Always a fun time to have you on, man. There's no better person to get unbiased <laughs> unless you're talking about Steph Curry than it is biased. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say no to that. <laughs> but um, always a, a great time to talk about former Louisville Cardinal star Donovan Mitchell. Next couple of months are going to be very, very interesting. And Shane, I'll be the first to say if he gets traded the same night you are coming on this show, we are going to talk oh about God. it from from a huge um, you know, all over perspective. But that's going to wrap up this special Wednesday edition of the show. Everyone have a great day. We will see you right back here.